it will be accessible. No one should fear that they won't understand it. I mean, that's something that people have said about the company right from the beginning. In fact, someone said to me after the first production of King Lear, you've rewritten it, haven't you? I could understand it. And we hadn't rewritten a word, actually. It was just that in our space, good, intelligent actors speaking at relatively normal levels rather than bellowing through a large, a large theatre. Uh, it, the, the Shakespearean language, after the few first few moments, becomes completely comprehensible. Awesome, Collierly, Marmabunga, draw! I'm playing the character of Kent, who, is, uh, who starts off the play as one of, one of Lear's uh, court, uh, presumably a, a trusted advisor, uh, and he's the, uh, the only person really to stand up to him. We're coming to the end of the second week, uh, so we're we're putting um, the scenes together in a, in a, in a bit more uh, detail, trying to get uh, firm building blocks with which we can then begin to play. Come, I'll flesh you. Come on, you master. They say it's the Everest, in which case I, my first thought was, I wonder what the Hillary step is. Uh, you know, the Hillary step is the uh, the dangerous bit near the top of Everest, which trips a lot of people up. And I think I've earmarked the scene. In many ways, it's um, it's a domestic drama. Uh, it's a family that explodes in a in a particularly horrible way. And if you think about it, you know, most great drama is domestic. It's about families. It's a very funny play. It's a very rude play. I mean, King Lear is one of the rudest men in Shakespeare. <laughs> I'm a bit of a Shakespeare Puritan, and I love Andrew Hilton's work because he doesn't do showbiz Shakespeare, he does Shakespeare Shakespeare. So I'm really happy and privileged to be here. Funnily enough, we'd never met before, and yet people from our body language seem to think that we've known each other all our lives. It's curious, he's got that effect on people, I think. Clear Shakespeare, that's what we don't want to start up cluttered Shakespeare, being clever with funny jokes and tin cans being booted all over the place. Just want to hear the verse. Good point, Mr. Stanley. You're focusing on that attack. Yeah. So we've only got two weeks left, actually, before we're into technical rehearsals and dress rehearsals and previews. <laughs> All of the moves, particularly for the Evan Edgar fights, are all directly taken from fight manuals of the time. So they are all Elizabethan fight moves. And the challenge is to keep the fight interesting from all different angles. This is nice, this is nice. I like this because it's kind of moody. Yeah. And whatever you do, you look like an idiot, so you'll be fine. <laughs> The world of our play begins with this rigid Elizabethan court um, ruled with a rod of iron by King Lear. So we start off with a very rigid Elizabethan um, set of brocades, I mean really beautiful fabrics. Once we've really come to, a, come to a state of war by the end, we've lost all sense of Elizabethan um, period and we've actually gone quite anachronistically into a world of a rebel army. Nobody really knows whose side they're on by the end, um, and the colours are washed out. A very sort of sad state of affairs by, by the end of it. I think we're on course, but it's, it's always tight. There's never enough time to rehearse play. <laughs>